In this video, we're going to take a look at how and when to use git stash in a git repository using source tree. Welcome to Atomay Now, I'm Marco Cruz. Let's dive in. This is the git repo that we're going to be working with called test repo. As you can see here in my source tree, I have a branch called my new feature. And let's say that we're making some changes in this feature. In the bottom right, we can see the same repo in my local directory. Let's begin by deleting one of these files. Let's delete this one right here. I'm also going to add a new file. And lastly, I'm going to update one of these files. Now let's move over to source tree. In source tree, we have this on stage files. We see some changes to developer two. When I click on it, we can see the changes that are happening here. This symbol right here indicates that this file here has been deleted. And this last one here indicates that this file is a new file and it's not being tracked yet. And now let's just say that you're working along and somebody comes and tells you to take a look at their changes. In that case, we would have to put away the changes that we're working on so that we can take a look at theirs. And to do that, we use this button called stash. This is the same as using the git stash command in the command line. And before I click this button, notice this left panel over here. It has section four stashes. And notice that right now there's nothing in this section. We don't have any stash changes. Now let's go ahead and stash these changes here. I'm gonna click stash. And notice that this is going to stash your current changes and return your working copy to a clean state. You can put a message here that will help remind you what this stash is about, or you can leave it blank and source tree will add a default message for you. We can also keep stage changes when we do this stash. In our case, we don't have any stage files. Let me cancel this. Notice that there's nothing in this staged area. Everything is unstaged. Let's go back. So I'm gonna leave this blank and click OK. And notice that two of the files went away, but this untracked file is still shown on this unstaged files area. If I go to the stashes section on the left, we can see a new stash. Let's click on it. And here we can see the changes. Readme file has been deleted, and this developer2.txt file has been edited. Let's go back to the workspace and click File Status. And here we see that file that is on stage. This is the only drawback when using source tree. We are not able to stash untracked files. If we were using the command line, we would use git stash-u to also stash this change. But in our case, we have no option but to leave this file here. But now you're able to take a look at other changes that other developers may be working on. Now let's say that you finished doing the work that others asked of you. And now you want to resume work in your own feature branch. And what we do then is to apply the changes that we have stashed away. And once you're in your feature branch, you can right click on the stash that you want to apply and then select apply stash. And here we see zero. And this is because there's only one stash right now. WIP means work in progress. So we can click this and then confirm. Now you can see that those changes came back to your feature branch and we can resume work. Let me give you another scenario in which you may need to stash your changes. And as we can see here, this developer2.txt has been changed locally. We have changed this word from high to high there. Now let's go to GitHub and make a change to this same file on the remote. So this is GitHub up here. I'm gonna click on this file here, the same file, and then I'm going to click these three dots and select edit file. In this case, let's just say we want to delete all of this and I'm going to type file has been changed by another developer. And what we're doing here is the equivalent of another developer making these changes to the same file that we have updated locally. Now let's scroll down here and we're going to commit these changes. And notice that this is the content of this file now. Let's go back to source tree on the left here. And let's just say that we finished working on our feature branch and now we're ready to commit these files. But before we commit these changes, we want to make sure that we grab all the latest changes from the remote branch. And to do that, we're going to click pull. And the pull from is going to be automatically selected, origin. And then remote branch to pull, we're going to select main. You may also see master. And once I click pull, it's going to go out to GitHub and try to fetch those changes and merge them into our local branch. Let's click pull. And notice that we get an error. It says here, your local changes to the following files would be overridden by merge. And here's the file, developer2.txt. And recall that we made some changes locally. 
and then we edited the same file on the remote. And that's why this is complaining, because the changes do not match. And look at the suggestion that is given us. It says, please commit your changes or stash them before you merge. And since we're in the topic of stashing, let's go ahead and stash these changes. We're going to close this, cancel, and now we will need to stash these changes. So let's go ahead and say stash. This time I'm going to give it a message and click OK. And notice that we have two stashes now. This is the first one that we did when we provided no message. And this is the one we just did. And this is the message that we added. Now we can go ahead and try to pull the changes again from the remote. Let's click pull and then we're going to select main and click pull. And notice that this time we didn't get any errors. And once we pull those changes from the remote, we would want to bring back the changes that we were working on. In this case, it's this stash right here. So I'm going to right click it and hit apply and then confirm. And notice that this time we get a different error message. It says conflict, merge conflict in developer2.txt. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to resolve this type of conflicts. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing for more great videos like this one. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.